got a good one. You may come from the same kind of family that I come from. There comes a point in time where you're expected at some point in your life, perhaps, to provide your family with bright, beautiful, and way above average grandchildren. <laughs> my husband and I got married. My parents waited a respectable nine and a half months before the question started. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? Where's the baby? Where's the baby and? Yes. Sadly, there was no baby. So my husband and I did what couples of the 90s did. We researched, we interviewed, we were tested, we took tests, we talked to doctors and specialists. And after two years, we were put on a waiting list. Two years after that, they called us. They said, she's here. Do you want to see her? Oh, did we want to see her? Of course we wanted to see her. And we're driving over, and my husband's driving. He was shaking a little bit. And he said, he looks at me and he says, I'm nervous. I looked at him and I said, I'm nervous too. He says, what if she doesn't like us? That thought hadn't occurred to me. I said, what if they don't let us have her? He said, I know, this is very nerve wracking. And we get there and we walked in and there she was. Oh, you've never seen anything more beautiful. A shock of black curly hair, bright blue eyes shining up at us, wagging her little doggy tail. We got a puppy. <laughs> now, how many of you have dogs or have ever had dogs? Excellent. What I want to talk to you about today was my breeder says you get this particular puppy and she's considered the most difficult one of the litter. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? She said because you have to train this puppy because a well-trained dog like well-mannered people are welcome everywhere. Hard to argue with that. And I kind of brushed her off. I said, Trudy, come on. I'm in the Navy, I'm used to training people, my husband's a Marine, we got this. And she goes, mm-hmm, and you're gonna get it because classes start next Saturday morning from nine to 11. And we did puppy obedience, and then we did puppy advanced obedience, and then we did puppy agility, like the weave poles and the seesaws. Has anybody done that? You kind of feel silly putting your dog on a seesaw. And then we did puppy um, confirmation, which being raised Irish Catholic, I found is different from confirmation. <laughs> Who knew? And what happened, ladies and gentlemen, was the techniques that I was using with my dog, by the way, this was every Saturday from 9 to 11 for two years. Oh. Right. It sounds like Little League, doesn't it? I know. And I was taking the techniques that I was learning in dog training, and somehow they were transferring into my Navy job. And it was helping. It was making things better. So what I want to share with you today are three of the main points that I like to make in my leadership talks. And the first is to reward good behavior. The second is please don't reward bad behavior. And the third is to be consistent. And these are, are written out for you in your packets. You've all got um, the book Master Your World, which talks about this. And you've also got the 15 ways to grow your business in every economy book. And those are in your packages, so you can look at a little bit more. So the rewarding good behavior, it sounds so simple. Who's ever had a puppy? a brand new puppy, and it's great because new puppies love you so much. And that's the best time to train is when they're still in love with you, kind of like children. Because then when they get older, maybe not so much all the time. And so if you want the puppy to come, anybody have a big dog? What's the biggest dog we have in the room? Anybody over 100 pounds? What do you have, sir? Great Pyrenees. A Great Pyrenees. How much does that puppy weigh? Uh, well, 110. 110. I have a Newfie. A Newfie. How much does that puppy weigh? About 120. About 120. Okay, so what's your dog's name? Billy, and what's your dog's name? Chloe. Chloe, excellent. So we're going to call both those dogs Princess Buttercup. <laughs> and so you've got, I like the movie, what can I say? And so you've got the little puppy, and it's a little big ball of fur, the Newfoundland, the little ball, did you get her as a puppy? So sweet, yes, yeah, so cute. And you've got the, the, your Great Pyrenees, because um, neither one of those shed at all. No, uh, not at all. So you've got your puppy, and you're like, puppy, Princess Buttercup, come! And you back up, and the dog gets a treat. And the dog says, this is awesome. And then when you want the dog to sit, you say, puppy, come! And the dog runs to you, and then you raise up the treat, and the okoli, that's Hawaiian, goes down. And then the dog gets a treat at that moment when the okoli touches the ground. And you say, good sit, and the dog says, that's a sit. And that's how we train dogs. But sadly, ladies and gentlemen, that's frequently not how we train people. That's frequently not what we do with people. Because if you've ever noticed that person at work who does an absolutely fantastic job, instead of getting rewards, what do they get? More work. 
So paradoxically, we are punishing the people who are slacking off and, and uh, who are not slacking off and not doing their job, and we punish the good people. How wrong is that? That's like calling the puppy, and as soon as the puppy comes running toward us with great enthusiasm, we go, Mph, meh, and we ignore the puppy. And sometimes at work we do that to people too, and we crush them a little bit when we do that. So the idea of rewarding good behavior worked really well in the Navy. Now, is there somebody here that would turn down a $100 bill if I said, I'm going to give you a $100 bill if you'll move up to this chair right now? Is anybody going to turn that down? Probably not. And some of you are thinking, I'm ready to move now. I'm packing my stuff. People respond to incentives. And people learn that if they are able to slack off and you reward that, they're going to do more of it because we get what we reward. And so if people have these incentives, like dogs, we need to capitalize on that. We need to use that. Now, in the Navy, we couldn't give people cash rewards. But what could I do? I could do a thank you note. And I'm always reminded to be grateful of everything. And so on Fridays, before I left work, wherever I was working, I would write a thank you note. And I would hand do it. There was one job I had. I was the chief of police at the Barbers Point Naval Air Station in Hawaii. And um, some of you might like this idea, but you know, a job that gives you all the handcuffs and guns you want, that's a good job. <laughs> some of you are thinking, no, that, that's not, but that's okay. Anyway, we had some people who um, were in a transitory period, and I had one particular young man who was having real trouble getting control of my, my inventory system. And I finally, after a couple months of working with him, got him to come around, and things were good. And so one, fri one Friday, I sat down to write the note. Now, some Fridays were more difficult than others. You're sitting there going, uh, dear lieutenant, Thank you so much for showing up most days this week <laughs> in some semblance of uniform and not actually setting the building on fire. You know, you try to get more positive than that. And in this case, once I saw this young man turn the corner, I saw that tipping point, I wrote him a note. Dear Petty Officer Lawrence, thank you so much for making the effort to make the changes that are needed in this job to be very successful. I know change is really hard, and I appreciate the effort. Thank you so much. Please keep it up. Respectfully, Commander Kelly. Sealed the envelope, put it on his blotter. Do you remember blotters? You know, blotters. And went home for the weekend. And he came in first thing Monday morning, and he held up that note. And he looked at me, and he said, ma'am, is this a joke? And I said, no, it's not a joke. He said, you're doing great. He goes, huh, walked down. I thought, well, that was the waste of a $2.95 Hallmark card. And I didn't think too much of it. And he continued to get better, and, and, we, and we worked really well together. And so I went on to another job, he went on to another job, I went on to another job, he went on to another job, and I was walking through the spaces at St. Pac Fleet in Hawaii, the Commander-in-Chief Pacific, and I see Petty Officer Lawrence sitting there. I'm like, hey, Petty Officer Lawrence, great to see you. How's your wife? How's your two kids? How's your two dogs? Because you know I remember the dogs. And there sitting on his desk was the note. Now, he had carried that note with him for five years. And ladies and gentlemen, that was a huge, humbling leadership moment for me because it tells me that people are truly underappreciated and undervalued, and, and when they feel valued, that they're more engaged. And so it was a great learning lesson for me. So let me just ask, how many of you, if you're, if you're working with other people from your organization, don't raise your hand, but how many people here feel as though you're overappreciated at work? Very few people. How many people feel, don't answer this one, how many people feel overappreciated at home? Don't answer that one either. We're a nation of people who feel underappreciated and undervalued, and partly because we've denuded it by giving everyone a participation trophy. And we all know that that doesn't mean anything. So being, being appreciated, being valued in the workplace is huge if you want to create a team of people who are focused on the right mission, the goals, and the outcomes that you want. So at your table, you've got the blue wristbands that say, be grateful. And I don't want you to just think about being grateful today, but actually doing something about it. Because that's where we get action. We can have all these great thoughts, but we actually have to do something about it. And then rule number two, don't reward bad behavior. And frequently in the workplace, we let bad behavior continue. And do you know why people let bad behavior continue? Let's say you work at a hardware store, and you see somebody putting something away, and it's not in the right spot, and they're another employee. Do you correct them? No. You know what people say? They say, it's not my job. Or I don't want to create conflict in the workplace because conflict could get me into trouble. Or I don't want somebody to cry. Or I don't want somebody to um, create tension. Or I don't want people to dislike me. And so because of that, we let bad behavior continue. So I moved to Colorado after getting out of the Navy. 
and I moved into my house and I was out walking my dogs with my uh, new, new neighbor and we were um, watching a pickup truck that came screaming around our gravel. And uh, I looked at my neighbor and I said, does this happen often? He goes, oh, sometimes. I'm like, hmm. I go, hold my dogs. He's like, oh, this is not gonna be good. <laughs> I'm like, that's okay. I used to be a cop. You know, I'm in my little sundress, <laughs> real cute. And the, the truck comes at me, and it, it stops, because I wouldn't be here otherwise. And I walk over to the driver's side, and there are four young men in the pickup truck. And I said, hey, gentlemen, how you doing? Yeah, that's what they said, too, absolute silence. <laughs> I said, I'm new to the neighborhood. Nothing. I said, I'm starting to meet my neighbors, and I thought you all might like to know there's a cop who lives right here on that corner. All of a sudden, that got their attention. They said, yes, ma'am. That is very good information. Thank you, ma'am. And they drove off at 15 miles an hour. Now, I got the behavior I wanted, and I didn't have to be ugly to do it. And sometimes people think that if we're going to correct somebody's bad behavior, we have to be mean or ugly. And Kevin was right. Performance evaluations get a bad rap because nobody likes doing them, and nobody likes getting them. Do you ever feel like you're getting that performance evaluation and it's going to be on Friday afternoon and you're wondering, well, is Friday my last day? <laughs> what are they going to tell me? And you feel like you're being summoned to the principal's office. Nobody likes it. But we have to correct bad behavior at the right time with the right spirit. Otherwise, we get more bad behavior. And then my rule number three is to be consistent. If it was okay yesterday, it should be okay today. If you don't want your Newfoundland or your Great Pyrenees puppy on the couch when you're watching TV, you don't let the puppy on the couch. If you don't want that adult 120 pound dog on the couch with you, putting on a lovely little princess buttercup, then you don't let the puppy on the couch. Don't let bad behavior start. And don't think bad behavior is gonna get better on its own, because it mostly doesn't. And folks, most people wanna come to work, they wanna do a great job, they wanna feel valued and appreciated, and great leadership makes all that happen. So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mary Kelly. It's been my pleasure to be here today. And if I can answer any questions later, please let me know. Business and leadership, thanks so much. Have a great one.